What's up, YouTube? Video number three in the series of covering the various armors that have been released with Empyrean Plus Two. Some winners, some losers, some interesting pieces, some a little more bland, but uh, we're making our way through them now. And uh, you already know the deal. Let's just hop into it. Uh, we have Amini Glovelets Plus Two, which are Ranger. Uh, more store TP. Did Bounty Shot get an upgrade? Whoops. Bounty Shot did get an upgrade. So this may be the first chance to get above plus four Treasure Hunter without Thief Main. So um, the original Glovelets improved Bounty Shot to bring Treasure Hunter from two to four. And now... That plus three means it should go to five, TH5. Um, cool. Store TP plus 10, damage taken minus 10. I think that store TP is maybe even the same as Malignants or one higher. Let me check. Malignants are 12 STP in that slot. So not a mid-shot gain exactly with the Amini Glovelets. Um, archery skill in addition to accuracy and ranged accuracy. Um, this now has higher ranged accuracy and obviously ranged attack than Malignants. This, this is definitely maybe a better mid-shot for Gandiva when AM3 is down. Um, yeah, the plus three will be the best mid-shot STP, more than, more than likely. Um, I don't know. I wouldn't rush to get this. I might wait for the plus three. If something changes with archery anytime soon, potentially we start looking at this again. I don't think so. Um, but that is a lot of ranged accuracy and ranged attack between all that archery skill and, and the base stats. So take it for what it is. Some people might get it for the bounty shot. I rarely see a use for bounty shot anymore. Anything that drops items via treasure hunter isn't really, you don't really bring ranger to that fight. So, nothing outstanding here. On to Scholar. Uh, Scholar gains a perpetuance bonus. I'm sure that's good. So, yes, perpetuance and imminence. Awesome. So, the original perpetuance bonus was 55%, increases perpetuance. Effects duration to 2.55 increase in duration instead of just a 2. With this, you now have a 2.6%. Um, you know, a 260% increase. Yeah. Um, when under Perpetuance. And then Imminence. Um, the resulting skill chain damage from Imminence goes from 11% to 12%. Meh. MBD10 is a straight addition, so you now have that. Uh, I don't know, scholar enough to say, is this maybe a helix item? Magic damage 22, Mab 47, the MBD plus the eminence bonus. Any scholars in chat want to comment if the eminence is important uh, when using um, helix bursts in order to reach your capped helix damage? Maybe comment down below in YouTube for the algorithm. Next. Azimuth. Gloves. What did we get? Uh, well, damage taken minus 11, enmity minus 12. This is bad. Why would you want to use this? Enmity midcast? Yeah, these are awful. Poor Geo. Geo's the other job. We were saying at the end of the last video with the uh, with the Black Mage stuff. I don't think SC knows what to do with it. Geo is the same. What do you? Why? Why? I mean, I I okay. Let me let me say one thing. When, I'm gonna try to say one thing positive about every piece of armor on here. Here here's my positive aspect. I I already subscribe to the set bonus on geo in favor of a lot of people will um utilize uh conserve mp in their midcast sets for geo um i like the five percent activation 
that reduce my reduces my geomancy to zero. So I already mid-cast my bubbles and indie spells. Well, the bubbles more so because the indie spells want the um, indie duration. I already mid-cast my bubbles in the five out of five azimuth. So technically I'm generating less enmity and I'm less likely to get bopped because I've got damage taken minus 11. Um, yeah, I guess as a free nuke piece, is does Ia beat it for free nukes? Um, that would be my only question. Geo shouldn't be free nuking. I agree with you, actually. Yeah. So. Enfeebling magic skill. Yeah, okay. Enfeebling accuracy. Okay, okay. <laughs> the Mac plus the enfeebling magic skill. Um. Yeah, Geo needs more help. And it's you're not going to get it from items like this. On to Beckoner's Bracers. This is the Avatar uh, Summoner. Um... Let's see the original. Increases TB granted from mana seed by 120%. I'm sure this is useless because I've never heard of it. Expend 100 MP for your avatar to gain 1,000 TP. Uh, okay. So now you gain... Whoops. Now you gain 1,300 TP, maybe. Um, depending upon day or weather, halves avatar perp cost. Okay. Um, these are pretty trash. Yeah, I'm sure BPD 8 is actually low. I'm sure there's a better BPD out there. Um, ooh, look at this. Madj Ava. Look at, look at this. Ava? Madj Ava? Has that ever been written on a piece of armor like that? <laughs> Isn't that weird, Jet? Am I wrong? What is this? <laughs> Okay, they just, they must have been too much text. <laughs> they needed to, they needed to save some, uh, yeah, it's got too many stats. They needed to save some space. Too many words on this. They couldn't fit it all in one box. All right, well, yeah, doesn't look great. We got some summoners in chat saying that these don't look great. So, <laughs> moving on. Biku Gloves. Uh, Biku Gloves. Tactical guard is probably not good. Probably when you guard, you gain 35 TP or something like that. Um, that goes up to 40. PDL 7 is likely outclassed by other PDL options. Um, Empaka? Tactical guard is just the bestest. The bestiest. Hand-to-hand -hand skill? No. Yeah, these look confused. I don't think this piece knows what it wants to be. Is it a TP piece with the hand-to-hand -hand skill? Is it a guard piece for tactical... Like a, a a guard? Like, do you guard with it? Uh, or do you weapon skill in it for PDL? Or or is it with Vera Throgna, but no uh, AM3, but there's no um, crit damage? Meh. Meh. <laughs> Moving on. Couple, couple of stingers here. Uh, the boy mufflers. Well, now this one. Um, restraint plus 120. We went from restraint 110. Increases the damage bonus of restraint by 110%. This is going to be 120%. Whoops. Keep doing that. Uh, which is good. Restraint's kind of like meh. But uh, obviously WSD is good. Well, also, I mean, if you're using restraint anyway... Um, you're going to want WSD, uh, and axe skill, um, maybe for farsha weapon skills in order to make sure that it stays attack capped. Although strength 19, what is Naomi on the hand slot? Naomi has strength 17, WSD 10. If this had like PDL on it, it'd be a shoe in um, attack 52, attack 60 on the Ame. Lower Mava. Defensive stats are all lower as well. At plus three, this will probably be your best in slot. Um, but if all they do is increase weapon skill damage and restraint bonus, um, I, I think these are, these are going to be very, this is a very lateral item. These don't, these don't necessarily lean 
I guess, it, especially, okay, so if you don't have access to high rank Niame, this is your weapon skill damage item. Let's start there. If you're not, if you don't have access to Niame, this is your weapon skill damage hand on uh, Warrior, where previously you had to have like a Valorous Augment. So there is that. Or even a good DM Valorous Augment in order to compete with something like this. So for starters, if you're just a, if you're if you're a, a, a like a fresh warrior or something and and depending upon again how hard this stuff is to upgrade going into sortie i don't think it'll be that hard to to get at least you know a few pieces plus two or whatever this is your weapon skill damage piece yeah i don't want to devalue that as far as end end game is concerned you're going to be comparing this to niame and you're going to end up with the fact that niame probably is better at the plus two and this is going to be slightly better at the plus three is what i'm what i'm looking for here uh, one thing, one thing I do want to say is I was hoping to see more reasons to keep these items equipped that we're not currently seeing. For example, the warrior set says augments double attack. So far, the head has given me a reason and the body has given me a reason to equip it during TP phase as in my engaged set. The hands, however, don't. But if you read the warrior's bonus, it's causes your double attacks to sometimes deal double damage. Um, you're not going to want this during the TP phase, so this will never offer you that 1% bonus proc rate to your, um, to your set bonus. I wanted to see more of that. I wanted to see more TP pieces from all of these sets in general, and we're just not getting it, at least so far. Um, but this is not a bad piece by any means. Moving on to Corsair. Crit rate, WSD. Oh, more roll duration. Uh, five more seconds on my rolls. Heck yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> um, here's your weapon skill damage piece for core. It uh, it doesn't come with any MAB, so it's not replacing your um, <sighs> your Carmine anytime soon. But it will be good for Savage Blade and Last Stand um, Evisceration, which is awful on core for no reason at all. It has crit rate um, and weapon skill damage, maybe. Um, most Corsairs are going to get it for the Phantom Roll and the weapon skill damage. Again, for your more for like your physical based attacks. Let's see. Um, last Stand. Savage Blade. The Rare Evisceration, maybe. Um, yeah, you don't, you're not going to hate to see this. Let's see, Agility 21 versus Niame's Agility 12. Higher Agility than Niame, 2% more weapon skill damage. At plus 3, this will, this will, more than likely be your WSD piece. It, it's good. Another piece that's just good. Okay, you know who's using... I'll tell you who's using Evisceration on Thief and Ego. It's me when I forget to unequip my Rostam after rolling. And I build 3k TP <laughs> or something. <laughs> Evis is better than Last Stand on Core IMO? Oh my gosh. I don't know how you're getting Evis to be any good on Core. My Mine are awful. Chevalier's Gauntlets. Moving on to Paladin. <laughs> Um, I do love a good self SC with uh, last stand for sure. All right, let's see Chevalier's Gauntlets. Sword skill, shield defense bonus. What is shield defense? Shield defense bonus. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> anyway, um, sword skill. Damage taken minus 10%. This is the first Paladin item where I've gone, nah. <laughs> Blocks reduce damage by more. Okay. Uh, I mean, maybe Crawler's Nest Cleaving. This is your this is your um, hand piece because really you're relying on Reprisal and uh, Phalanx in order to bring your zero factors in before DT? Heck no. Heck no. Boo, I'm moving. I can't I can't look at this piece any longer. 
Eber's Mitts, Divine Caress from plus three to plus four. Increases the number of times a status ailment will be resisted after removal by Divine, divine Caress by three to four? Yes. Yes, please. Um, I mean, I don't know how many fights this is really useful, but like, anyway, the more times I can resist the status effect without trying, the better. Regeneration 24. All right, you get two extra seconds on regen. DT minus 10. It's so you don't get bopped in your mid cast. I'd say a white mage is going to want this. It's nothing extraordinary, but it does what it needs to do in increasing the strength of the things you're already doing. Standard upgrade piece. I don't expect much more out of the plus three either. Moving on. Iralaz. Grants resistance to all status ailments plus seven. DT minus 10. Great sword skill 33. This is bad. Uh, yeah, anything that's not terms is like, you really got to convince me. Uh, I'm going to try to say one good thing about it. Um, I've got nothing. Moving on. Philly. Did I not pull up the feely? All right, we're just gonna have to rely on our memory for the feely piece. March plus one is the same. Oh yeah, I remember this one. Yeah, this has been given like two extra skill across the board and 10 DT. Um, again, same as before with the Bard set. I really think they're saving their extra plus to songs for the plus three and w across the board, we're getting extra skill. Um, in your mid-cast, you're getting a little bit more damage taken. Which is nice. I will say, there's a lot of times where I'm getting beat up on Bard and need to sing a song. And yes, yeah, songs aren't interruptible. And I'll usually get off, like, say, Horde Lullaby. But in that small window of time, you are getting beat on. So all this all this stuff that could be mid-cast... I actually don't remember. Yeah, this is going to be mid-cast for March. I don't know about necessarily mid-cast for Lullaby. People who are smarter than me are going to figure out where some of these pieces go, and I think this is a case of that. But if this ends up in a mid-cast set for Bard, the extra 10% damage taken is going to be relevant as you're getting smacked. Let's move on. Hashishin. This is Blue Mage. Blue Magic Recast Delay, minus 15%. Damage taken, minus 9%. All they added was DT minus nine. They improved the enmity. They added some base stuff. This too is awful. Um, I think that um, the hands are not the greatest winners out of uh, any of these sets or any of these uh, slots of gear. Um, yikes. <laughs> I feel sorry for you, blue mages. I don't even know what you'd want in this slot. They're not terrible for nukes. Okay, Mab 52. Sure. I mean, if okay, if you can afford to upgrade this, but not buy uh, a Malric, you've got a case, I think. Otherwise, this is just going to sit on your slip until plus three comes out, and then plus three is bad too, so you never you never upgrade it. Next piece. Hattori Teko, Ninja. Elemental Ninjutsu damage plus 16%. Increases Fute damage by 24%, must remain equipped. Elemental Ninjutsu damage gives 14 Mab to Ninjutsu and it's additive with regular Mab? Why is this so bad? They could have literally just said like Mab plus 16. If this is not a multiplier, why? Square Enix. You're so close. You're so close to... to... <laughs> oh. <sighs> Have there been any good hand pieces yet? I don't think so. <laughs> Mm, 
No, not not good in the sense that some of the other pieces we've looked at are good. All right, heathens. Um, absorb TP effect plus 25, DT minus 9. So this is a mid-cast for your absorb TP spell. You gain an extra 6% on absorb TP. Um, not good. Oh, yes, yes. Core getting a weapon skill damage piece is, like, objectively good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll agree there. And it's only going to get better. Although, of course, no Mab means it's bad for your magical weapon skills, which are the bulk of Core's damage. I guess if you consider Savage Blade the bulk of Core's damage for certain content, that is true. Anyway, uh, these don't look great. Again, mid-cast for Absorb TP only. Um, whoops. All right, now we've got Puppet. Uh, store TP 10, DT minus 9, Automaton. That's a lot of stats. Does R25 Naomi overtake Meganata hands for last stand? Last time you checked, they didn't. That's probably still true. Yeah, this... I don't, I don't see this being good. Maybe the pup mythic builds. Um, any pups want to comment in the on Twitch or on the YouTube video? Let me know if there's something I'm missing about this set, but so far I haven't. Uh, oh, there, there's the two pieces for overdrive, right? That's what I was told. Which is not one of these. Which is not this one, I mean. All right, red mage. Lethargy Ganthrots. Saboteur plus 12. Increases the potency and duration granted by Saboteur by an additional 12%. They need to be equipped during mid-cast to gain access to this bonus. It doesn't have to be worn during JA activation. Um, now, 1% more on Saboteur. How much more enfeebling skill? 19 compared to 24. 5 more enfeebling skill. Mac 52 versus Mac 24. I guess if you lock this in with saboteur up it's now worth doing we're we're red mages already doing this okay yeah for the composure bonus you were but were you already locking this in when uh saboteur is active no i get that i get that you, you guys are giving me valid reasons to have the plus one um i'm just wondering if potentially you're locking this in during saboteur now well, not necessarily lock, but you know what I mean. Like, during Enfeebles with Saboteur up. Because you're not losing a ton of Mac anymore. You would have been earlier. Um, I could see that. I could see that being a thing. Uh, let's move on to one I actually know something about. Maculele. So, originally, you had Skill Chain uh, increases the square mod and the equation of TP return for Reverse Flourish from 5 to 12. So you can see Reverse Flourish plus 12. We're talking about the square mod here. So that is your multiplied by the finishing moves consumed, and then that's squared. And so that's a mod to that. So um, Reverse Flourish um, basically eats 5 FMs uh, maximum, depending upon how many you have, up to, up to 5 and so now you're going to be multiplying that number by a new value. You're going to be multiplying that number by 13 instead of 12. So I think which translates to 5 extra TP. Because it's going to be the square mod is going to go from 12 to 13. Which is multiplied by the finishing move squared. So 1 times... Oh no, an extra 25 TP. You're going to be getting an extra 25 TP off of first flourish no matter what the value is. Take it, take it for what it is. Um, skill chain bonus is not worth it. You, you at least with Naomi and your weapon skills, like you're, you're far more likely to be capping uh, skill chain bonus now than any other point in the history of the game. Um, and damage taken minus ten is not very good because likely you're not going to be in your reverse flourish precast uh, equipment for very long. While this piece is good in the sense that it gives you more tp return it's not actually good in the way um that it's like gonna be something you you seek after soon after the content drops let's move on kasuga kote samurai wsd 
It's a weapon skill damage hand. Se Se Sekanoki TP bonus based on remaining TP plus 100%. Let's see what that does. While wearing this, a weapon skill with Sekanoki will have the FTP of 1000 TP plus 100% of remaining TP. Oh, cool. So it makes your Sekanoki weapon skills fire at a, at, a, at a regular potency rather than a reduced potency. Yeah, um, what are you using in that slot now? Is it Naomi? Because 8% weapon skill damage on Sam is good. I mean, Sam has lots of WSD, though. So we may also be in the case of, like, um, you may be using PDL in this slot. Uh, I don't actually know. Um, and the strength is low because the strength seems to be naturally low in hands anyway. So, looks good. Um, and once again, um, my first opinion is based on end game experience play. I play with a lot of people who are like high rank Naomi stuff like that. It's always my mind goes first. If you are building a samurai from scratch, especially, and you have access to this content, this weapon skill damage eight is going to carry you for quite a long time. My mind is consistently on best in slot, but definitely this is going to be a good piece for, for a lot of the player base. And, um, the plus three will, of course, be likely be best in slot across the board, depending upon um, what we see with maybe like Naomi rank 30. Great for physicals, but Naomi still wins for hybrids. Very, very true. If you have this content, then you should have Odyssey gear, not going to lie. No, because Sortie is going to be progressive. They said that like a solo person with trust should be should do great in the first room. It's actually, the, the sortie is going to, I think, I think sortie is going to scale as you go on. Of course, we don't have the content yet, but you should be able to get, this is plus two gear. This is not plus three gear. Um, you should be able to get plus two gear with relatively small investment of time, maybe over the course of a while, but this should be accessible to um, a large section of the player base. More so than uh, Odyssey. Rue Rod Stomping. All right, I'm moving on. <laughs> Nakumi. Nakumi. Beast. Um, ready bonus. Sick bonus. Crit rate. DT. Pet accuracy. I think this, this is uh, improving an already good item. Am I wrong about that? So... Um, if you're already using this for any situation where you're using utilizing the sick TP bonus or the ready TP bonus and you have to hit the mob, you now have a higher pet accuracy and magic accuracy. Well, and ranged accuracy. So things like, I don't know, like the ooze. I don't really I don't really know for sure what moves Beast uses this TP bonus in and and doesn't, but I also don't know what access beasts have typically to pet accuracy and magic accuracy. I know that we've tried landing the HP down on like Atonement A3s and had issues here and there. So I wonder if this piece is gonna fill in that role or not. Again, beasts, comment down below. Let me know what I'm missing with these pet jobs. I only have one and it's Geomancer. And we all can see how good they've been treating Geomancer. These, sl these hands will always be best in slot for ready moves just because of the TP bonus. I can believe that. Yeah, so I feel like this is what... Uh, let's call this an icing. This piece of gear is an ice... Is icing. It's taking what's already good and just making it better. Like the white mage was, for example. Alright, on to... Um, Dragoon. Uh, Spirit Link... Enhances spirit. Oh, spirit link plus twelve. Double attack five. Enhances spirit link effect. Increases spirit link potency by twelve percent and removes two to three more debuffs from the wyvern. Okay, so I assume they just fixed the wording and now it's augment spirit link. Double attack six. Spirit link plus fourteen. This is your macro piece for spirit link. I wouldn't expect anything more of it. Double attack six is really generic. Um, yeah, this one doesn't even have a cool side effect like, um, like the other piece did that gives you food based on your wyvern or gives your wyvern food based on what your, your main is. 
Yeah, enhanced to augment. I mean, it could be an actual change tech. But to me, this just looks like a fixing of the wording. All right. Thief time. Skulker's armlets. Sneak attack plus 28, DT minus 10. I don't I don't think this is this needed to have this needed to have crit damage on it. So if you look at increases sneak attack damage by granting 1.25 base damage per dex instead of 1.0. So it increases it multi, it's a multiplier to your dex mod. Um but like you're giving up all sorts of I mean originally you're giving up dex and weapon skill damage that you would normally have from a higher tier item. Now we're gaining 8 dex accuracy and attack and now it's a 1.28 multiplier instead of a 1.25. I mean, maybe there's opportunities for this to overtake straight weapon skill damage. Um, but like, if all they had to do was put crit damage on this piece, and it would have been utilized in sneak attacks every time. Now, now it's just like, well, do I do more damage or do I have slightly more base damage? Granted, now the accuracy and attack and dex is on here. I don't know. This could be a situation, a parse situation. We've met a couple of those pieces where the parse may show that this is the better option. I guess uh, we'll find out as time goes on and people um, get to testing this stuff. All right, last we have Black Mage. As usual, I love to leave y'all with a good old fashioned disappointment. Magic crit rate, magic crit damage, both got boosted. Wow. Damage taken minus 12. I mean, there's a lot of DT in these sets. <laughs> Magical critical hit rate, as is written here, is a very archaic, and so is magical crit hit damage, to be fair, is a very archaic addition to the game that needs to be outright removed. Um, magical crit rate 2 is the proper way to do it. It's only on one piece right now, and that's the Serata Tathlum, which is an RNG drop from Amen Trove, and it does it properly. Um, these gloves are bad because these archaic abilities are bad. These, these need to be removed from the game and replaced. Oh, I would say magical crit hit damage wouldn't be bad if it were based off magical crit hit rate 2, as is shown by the Shrada Tathlum. Let me pull that up for the YouTube video. Shrada Tathlum. Magical crit hit rate 2. This is an actual 10%. 10% of the time, your spells deal 25% more damage. Boom. Simple, straight to the point. Magical crit hit rate once, 1 is this is this strange... I'll just pull it up because I don't want to have to try to... Magical... It's so bad. You get a 25 Mab bonus. That's it. So... Here's the problem. Back in the day, early days of Final Fantasy XI, 25 Mab is kind of equivalent to... 25% damage. If you have zero map, I believe if you have zero map, it is. But the issue is, map is this additive term in the equation. So when you have 200 map and you add 25, cons consider this. This is a this is a 10% chance, 11% chance to add 25 map. So basically, if you round down to 10%, you're looking at, on average, 2.5 magic attack bonus added to your nukes on average. There's 52 mab on this item alone. You could literally add two, you, three. If you added three mab to this item, you would add, oh, well, I guess I'm not factoring in the critical hit damage. Um... As, but essentially, for the critical hit rate, you could add three map to the item and over and, and outperform the magic critical hit rate stat on average just in this one piece of gear alone by adding three. And so, um, anyway, the slash end rant. Get rid of critical hit rate one, change it over to critical hit rate two. Then this piece looks tempting. 
If this recruit rate hit, hit rate two, 11% of the time, your entire nuke does 25% more damage. And then you're multiplying that by a magical crit hit damage multiplier. Yes, yes. Anyway, that's gonna be it for this video. Twitch chat, stay tuned. We have more to go. Uh, you know the drill. We have what coming up. We have the legs and feet. Um, and if you haven't already seen the previous videos on the head and body, MP plus two, some winners, some losers, some stinkers in between. Anyway, that's it for this one. I'll see you in the next video, YouTube. Peace out.